Hey there, gang. It is time for another unboxing video. I have this short box of comic books here that I need to unpack so that I can get those books graded for sale on eBay. And I am inviting you to kind of look over my shoulder as I do that and see what I have to work with today. I have not peeked. I have no idea. So it's going to be just as big a surprise for me as it is for you. So if you like comic books, stick around. We're going to have some fun. Hey there, Bobby. Welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke, and this is an unboxing video. And please do like, share, subscribe, comment away, do all the groovy things. I don't think I have much to say here at the outset. No, no preamble. No, um, no business that needs to be done. So, <laughs> I've done the beg. Uh, for the likes and the shares. So um, I guess we'll just jump right into it. Let us do that then. I'll grab the first stack here. And this is interesting. Right here at the top. Is this going to be... Oh yeah. Oh this is going to be all. All Silver Age Superman. Um, probably all Silver Age DC. But at least Superman for the first part here. Action Comics 318. This is the death of Luthor. Don't worry. He'd get better. <laughs> That looks like Brainiac, but I, this is before Brainiac's introduction, I believe. Uh, so, there's that. This is Action 307. There is a cameo of Saturn Girl in this. And if this is the one that I'm thinking of, it's not Saturn Girl, it's Saturn Woman, uh, the adult version. Of, you know, from the Legion of Superheroes, if you're familiar with that character. And she appears with Prody, who was a Chameleon Boy's little protoplasmic shape-shifting pet and it created kind of a kerfuffle because Prody died in Adventure Comics 312 and so how could he still be around to be working alongside Saturn Woman because he died uh, helping Saturn Girl uh, helping to revive Lightning Lad from the death from the death I <laughs> sound as old as I actually am <laughs> um but anyway, uh, that is what led to the introduction of Prote 2. And so retroactively, they decided that the one in here was Prote 2. Here's Action Comics number 306. And that's a uh, nice looking book. Action Comics 295. I don't know why, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know this is on my list my personal list of uh, Legion of Superhero books. I'm a, a, as you might guess from the uh, title of this channel, Shanghala, I am a big uh, Legion of Superheroes fan. I can't remember why this is on my Legion list. It might just be a mon appearance. And here we've got two of them, although this one has uh, something written here. It just says, it does. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it definitely does. This is a freaky cover. Here's Perry White. Somebody has uh, somebody doesn't like Lois Lane and blacked out her face. But uh, this bug-eyed Superman is pretty cool. That's the kind of thing that uh, uh, Grant Morrison would have made use of in uh, the All-Star Superman series, had he thought of it. Here's uh, another familiar trope. Lex Luthor gets superpowers, this time with uh, complete with multicolored belt and costume. So there you go. That's number 298. Action Comics number 300. And so at this point, uh, we really didn't celebrate anniversaries the way we do today. These days, you know, any excuse at a whole number, they will do a giant 80-page, uh, 9.99 book. But uh, this is uh, poor Superman live to the end of time when the sun has turned red and he's lost his powers and everybody's dead and he's very sad oh well look at this i said it'd be all dc and i lied to you here's amazing spider-man number 23 nice pretty nice condition oh no i take that back we've got some pieces out down here still pretty nice i bet that does super well on the ebay here is number 21 with the human torch and the Beetle. You wouldn't think the Beetle would be enough to take on both Spider-Man and the Human Torch, but there it is. Action Comics 294. And this is Superman and the Kryptonite Killer. 
The Secret Origin of Supergirl Superhorse. Well, there you go. Action Comics number 293. When Superman defended his arch enemy, why would he do that? And here's a uh, new Supergirl meets Superhorse 292. So that is actually not the first appearance of Superhorse. He first appeared in Adventure Comics number 293, appearing in the Legion's time in the future. So this meeting where he first meets uh, Supergirl is uh, actually his second appearance. I've always thought this is a cool cover. I don't know why. It just strikes me as being kind of neat. That's Action Comics number 291. Here's half a Superman. This is uh, kind of Superman Red, Superman Blue. Also predicting the uh, Electric Superman era, I guess. Got a uh, an arrival stamp right there. Here's some Super Pet action. Now, I'm a little annoyed as a Legion fan that the Super Pets have something upcoming uh, from DC. I don't know if it's a book or a cartoon or something. But it's not the Legion of Super Pets as it should be. They're calling it the League of Super Pets. And nothing really diminishes the stature and importance of the Legion of Superheroes like calling the Legion of Super Pets now the League of Super Pets. Anyway, this is the Prody 2 that I mentioned. This is where he joins the Super Pets. Super Horse, Cat, Dog, and Monkey. There was supposed to be a super bird, too, who was mentioned as a member in a letter column, but we never did actually see a super bird, not until the uh, DC 1 million issues. Clark Kent's clothes. Hey, is that Commissioner Gordon <laughs> putting Superman on trial? Actually, you know what that looks like? That looks like Binger <laughs> from the Rittenhouse trials. So we know he's a crooked prosecutor. Oh, I probably just lost half of my subscribers with that comment, didn't I? Oh, well, I'll take the heat. This is another familiar trope. I don't know why, but uh seems like Silver Age readers were just fascinated with Perry White getting superpowers. Like every third issue, Perry White had superpowers. But there it is. Red Kryptonite changes Superman into the monster from Krypton. Oh, no. Oh, no. Action Comics number 304 with Borko of Gorn and Boscar of Karg. I still feel like a, uh, you know, Borco and Boscar would be a pretty good uh, uh, buddy travel uh, book, kind of in the vein of the old Bob Hope and Bing Crosby movies. <laughs> yeah. On the road to SETI Alpha 3 with Borco and Boscar. <laughs> you, you, you write to DC and tell them, uh, hey, uh, I know this guy Duke, he should write this series for you. On the road with Baco and Bhaskar. Uh, that would be so much fun. Uh, Action Comics number 305. And here we've got Gold Kryptonite. I don't know if this is the first Gold Kryptonite. I don't think so. Got an arrival date written here. But Gold Kryptonite, as you may know, could uh, rob Superman of his powers permanently. Adventure Comics number 302. So only the third in this series. Uh, the Legion Reign and Adventure Comics from issue 300 to 380. Pretty much the full length of the Silver Age. And this is 302. This is the origin of Sun Boy. As well as being the end of Sun Boy. And at this point it's worth mentioning um, Ultra Boy only had this flash vision. It wouldn't be until later that he would... Oh, actually it was Pen Penetra Vision. It wouldn't only until be later that he would uh, develop all of his other powers. 303, now at the early uh, early stages here, Adventure was still a, a Superboy title. The Legion only appeared as a backup feature, and uh, occasionally, such as this, on the cover. But they would uh, be soon to take over the whole book. At this early stage, though, you still had Superboy covers. And this, uh, Adventure Comics 303, this is important. You may not consider it a key book, but I do. This is the first appearance of Matter Eater Lad. So, rather you are a Hardcore Legion fan or not, you have to appreciate Matter Eater Lad. And uh, that's his first appearance. All right. Oh, I didn't really mean to, but I grabbed a giant stack this time out. And I think, actually, this will be the last stack 
for this box because I'm getting kind of chatty on these books. So we'll save the rest of this box for the next video. This is Adventure Comics number 305. I forget what the Legion story is in here. This, though, 307, this is the first appearance of Element Lad, who uh, initially was Mystery Lad. So there you go. Only appearance of the Camera Eye Kid. Oh, nice! Nice! Adventure Comics number 300 with this oft-imitated cover. So that's the beginning of the Legion uh, series. Very, very nice. And this is where mon L actually uh, joins the Legion. Initially as a reservist, he's still trapped in the Phantom Zone. That's nice. Nice. Looks maybe nicer than my copy. Very good. 298, featuring the fat Superboy. And uh, prior to the Legion, it was Tales of the Bizarro World that was the backup feature. Aquaman number 12. Aquaman and his young ally, Aqualad. That's kind of cool. The Atom, number 11. Trouble at the 10-Year Club. I've never read that book. I couldn't tell you anything about it. Here's the Atom, number 9. Leaping over a telephone pole. A telephone pole. <laughs> Just a telephone with a single bound. This, I believe, the Atom number 8. I, I, Is this the first appearance of Dr. Light? No. No, I think Dr. Light first appeared in Justice League. So this might be the second or third appearance. And again, being trapped in a light bulb. So many of the Adam's problems, um, you know, just grow. Grow to normal height, and that'll fix that. Here's the Adam team up with Hawkman. And I think this predates Hawkman having his own title, maybe. I'm not real sure. Might have been a test to see if Hawkman should get his own book. Although, certainly the uh, appearances, the solo appearances in Brave and the Bold would have done that as well. Here's the Adam number six, the Highwayman. Uh, <laughs> look what some little shit did with a, with a Sharpie. I don't think they had Sharpies back then, but magic marker at any rate. That's the Adam number five. Detective Comics 316 with Dr. Double X. Hey, hey Flash, look at this. Some of your own books. Flash number 141. I think that's the top. I forget what issue the top died in. Might be this one. I don't think so, though. The Trickster is a classic cover. These uh, bags are sticking together a little bit. I've got to be careful. It's not too bad because they've got backing boards, so... I don't have to be quite, well, I have to still have to be careful, but not quite so delicate. So there you go. Flash Annual. And uh, one and only Flash Annual of the Silver Age. Here's another classic cover. I don't think this is the first appearance of Abracadabra. Not 100% sure, but the Puppet Flash cover is, is definitely a classic. Here's an early appearance of the Elongated Man in his original purple costume with the, the uh, crinkle, crinkle gloves. Fighting uh, Captain Cold. Another Flash. And this is, uh, this is where Kid Flash gets the more familiar costume that he had during the Silver Age and until he uh, took over being Flash uh, right there at the beginning of the Copper Age. But originally, he just he was just like a shorter version of the Flash in the exact same costume. Eventually, they were like, eh, visually, we need to give him a different look. Mirror Master. That's some nice stuff. Nice stuff right there. Pied Piper. That's Flash number 138. Oh, these books will all do well. And they look in pretty decent shape. I'm looking at, uh, at least in the bags here, they're looking like... Four, five, 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 five. I mean, I would, I would take that as a Silver Age DC book all day long. An early team up, if not the first team up, between Captain Cold and Heat Wave. I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. My Greatest Adventure. So there's the early Doom Patrol, still in their uh, green costumes. Negative Man, Elastic Girl, and Poor Melting Robot Man. Eighty-two. What was the first appearance of the uh, Doom Patrol? 
Was it 80? That's a pretty early appearance then. Here's 84, still in green, still with the <laughs> robot man melting. That seemed to be a common theme there early on. This one isn't in quite as nice of a shape. And I don't think they are yet calling the villains the rogues gallery. Let's see, we get some damage down here, which is unfortunate. Is a team up with Green Lantern. That happened a lot during the early Silver Age. Here's a pretty good uh, After Effects shot demonstrating his super speed. That was number 132. This is a uh, this is a pretty famous iconic Adam Strange cover by I believe that's Murphy Anderson. Mystery in Space number 82. This one, this one's a little weird because it's like, oh, I guess, I guess there's his leg there. I was going to say, where's the lower half of his body? Because that's, there's no ship here. But I guess this alien has weird little atrophied legs. And so they're actually there. All right. Take your word for it. That's Mystery in Space 83. Here is number 84, Fighting the Dust Devil. There's he with, uh, what's her name? Alana, is that right? There you go, number 85. Let's do, no, I think we'll call, well, actually, let's see. How many more mystery and spaces are there? Just a couple more, just a couple more. So we'll finish out this video with these. That's a nice, uh, actually, it looks like Carmen Infantino. It might be Infantino with Murphy Anderson inks. A little piece out right there. That's 86. And then Hawkman had a, a short run in uh, Mystery in Space. Here he is, uh, number 87. Number 88. I think this might also predate his series. He got, he got several tryouts. Uh, you know, Hawkman was popular during the... Uh, Golden Age, DC really wanted to make the uh, the Silver Age Hawkman fly. Arr, arr. <laughs> Pun not intended. <laughs> but uh, just couldn't seem to make a go of it. And here is uh, Space Ranger. And that is uh, Mystery in Space number 92. So there you go. That's that box. Flash, I'm glad we got to see a few of your own books in there. That was fun. And we're going to finish off this box next time out. It's probably going to be even more DC Silver Age books. So we'll see you then. And until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.